Aleluia! Aleluia! We have a night on our hands tonight. Tonight is going to be massive. 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 I'm suspicious of great miracles tonight. <laughs> Um, now, I thank God for the opportunity to be here. I'm also believing God for complete healing from some flu. Yeah, so as I preach, I'll be preaching to myself. I've come with the teaching aids. It's going to be a massive night. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. I am always blessed to be here. Thank you, Reverend, for having me. Thank you, Aunt Florence, for having me. Thank you for loving us. I came with I came with my wife. I want her to they want to see you. That's the <laughs> that's that's the new one. They want to see you. Should I add, they want to hear you? Yeah. They want to hear you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Thank you for loving us. I am always glad that these microphones are always so loud and nice. Eh? Thank you so much. Eh? Machine guys, eh? may God bless you. But thank you so much for loving us, and I'm also expectant. The Lord is going to do us good. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. We also came with our spiritual daughter. She's called Sandra. They want to see you. <laughs> Please clap for her. She's called Sandra. Called Sandra. Uh, we also have some some materials, books. Uh, at the end of the overnight, you can see her. She has books, some teachings I've done on healing. You can't teach everything in one night. Some things are on CDs. and So then there are some teachings we've had in men's conferences. Uh, then... Uh, Books you can you'll see at the end of the service. The book is twenty thousand, DVDs are five thousand, MP3s are. Uh, you talk to her. <laughs> you can negotiate for the MP3s from between three thousand and five thousand. You know that I'm a doctor, right? Yes. Yeah. So today's subject: God's medicine bottle. That's why I, what I'm talking about. And uh, I have a friend uh, who came to attend this overnight. Maybe the, the title was very interesting for him. He's, he's a pharmacist. Please, can you, can you just clap for him? He's on the keyboard. So we, we are ministering together. You know, how many of you have ever seen a pharmacy? <laughs> no, you don't take things for granted. You know? Yeah, you don't take things for granted. When we were... So when you go to the pharmacy, you'll find things like this. You'll find drugs like this. Where I come from, they say they, are, they call it Double Okara. <laughs> You've heard that name? <laughs> its name is not Double Okara. That's not its name. Its name is Amoxicillin. But you hear people say, and I don't know why they say Double Who? 
You know? Hmm? <laughs> It's amazing the way things people people say things okay I'm talking about God's medicine bottle every time there is a sickness every time there is an epidemic if you hear that uh, there is cholera somewhere there is a mad dash to the pharmacies when our children get cough we run the pharmacies. When the doctors prescribe, we run to the pharmacies. And you'll find, when you enter the pharmacy, you'll find bottles that are full of medicine. But let me tell you, no matter, no matter how smart a pharmacy looks, the purpose of a drug is not to be in the pharmacy. Do you hear what I say? No matter how neat the shelves look with drugs, the purpose of those drugs will not be fulfilled as long as they stay in the farmers. When we prescribe as doctors, when we prescribe, they go to the pharmacy, and you get the drugs, then they'll give you, they say, take this bottle, take this. Or if, if you are an inpatient, these drugs will be on a trolley, which the nurses move around the ward. As long as the drugs are on the trolley, they are not fulfilling their purpose. Are we together so far? Even if the trolley looks so neat, somebody could be dying in the bed when the drug is so neatly placed on the trolley. Are we together so far? The nurse could be taking tea when the patient is dying and the drug is on the trolley. The other thing is the, the drug might be brought and is put on the bedside. As long as the medicine bottle is on the bedside of the patient, but the medicine inside is not being taken, the patient can even die when the medicine is on the bedside. There are people who like to put the Bibles under the pillow. There are others who were badly influenced by Nigerian movies. You know, in Nigerian movies, you see the pastor pointing the Bible at the person with the demon. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have you ever seen those words? Oh, you... You may, you have never watched Nigerian movies. You are Mr. and Mrs. Holy. You've never watched Nigerian movies. But as long as the word is not spoken, as long as the word is not believed, even if you dress up in a shirt with the pictures of the Bible, <laughs> the Bible won't affect you. Are we together so far? Tonight is going to be massive. Now what happens is for the drug to be effective those bottles are always sealed. When you find the bottle, when you go to the pharmacy and you find the bottle not sealed you have the right to refuse it. Because that drug will most likely not be potent. It might even be expired. But when it is sealed and you check the expired date and the drug is not expired, what happens is that they are going to break the seal 
and open the bottle. It is when they open the bottle that they'll finally have access to the what? To the medicine. Okay? Now, even having the medicine in your hand is not enough. Because we have some people who are very stubborn, who don't like medicine. You give them medicine, they go home, they hold it in their hand, and instead of putting it in the mouth, they throw it behind. <laughs> Do you know such people? Yes. <laughs> Tell your neighbor that person could be somebody next to me. <laughs> Let us be honest a bit. How many of you used to throw medicine away? Look at them, look at them, look at them. Okay, how many still throw medicine away? You still throw it away. Now, inside the medicine, that is now where the pharmacies, the pharmacists come in. Inside the medicine are specific components. Those components in the drug are what make it potent. That is the real gist of the matter. That's the real medicine. If you're taking medicine for malaria, inside that coatem tablet, there are specific components that are designed to act against the parasite which causes malaria. If they give you an injection of penicillin, inside that injection, there's a specific drug, a specific component that is designed to hit the organism that causes pneumonia. So if you have a when you go to the pharmacy, they will tell you if you, there's a drug called ceftriaxone. They will ask you, do you want the one from Germany or the one from India? Usually when they're asking you whether you want from Germany or India, it's because, I will not say which country, but the one from one of those countries, the component is so minimal. Okay? So you think you have taken the drug when you have taken what? Air. Yeah. The one from another country has the right concentration. Actually, that's the word, concentration. Are we together so far? Now, that is the medicine that as human beings, we have got the wisdom to manufacture. But the Bible says, what is impossible with man is possible with God. God also has his own medicine. And that's what I came to talk about tonight. God has his medicine, and God's medicine is, it is cheaper, it is quicker, and it has no side effects. And as I share tonight, I'll be giving you examples. Many of you will be healed as I give examples. Because I'll talk about a component, and then I demonstrate it. I demonstrate how it heals ulcers and how it heals back problems. It's going to be a massive night tonight. There is somebody uh, who has motion sickness. There is somebody that God wants to heal of, you know, motion sickness, every time you enter the taxi, every time you enter the bus, you feel like you want to puke, or you puke. Like, every time you're going for the journey, you always look for a cavera. It's like one of the things you pack. Any person like that, the Lord Jesus wants to heal you. Come and I lay this hand on you. The way we open God's medicine bottle is different from the word. With God's medicine bottle, I lay my eh.
Yeah. God told us when we are in the car, when we are coming, that he wants to heal people with motion sickness. You're going to go back today, is, is, things are going to change. You'll go back, you will never, you will never go with Buvera in the, for journeys. This is, this is how it happens. The Bible says, believers shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. These hands, they are charged. I am full tank tonight. Yeah. When I lay my hands on you, I am releasing God's medicine in your system. That's the way it works. The way God's system works is that believers, we are moving hospitals. Me, I believe that I'm a hospital with all the specialties. Right now, we are going to lay hands, and I don't know which specialty deals with motion sickness. But the Lord is going to heal you. Because he told me he's going to do that. As I lay my hands on you, believe that you are healed by his stripes. Because First Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says, by his stripes, we were healed. It happened 2,000 years ago. As I lay my hands on you, I will make it happen in your body. In the name of Jesus. By his wounds, we are healed. I release healing from motion sickness. In the name of Jesus. I release healing from motion sickness. In the name of Jesus. We release healing in your body from motion sickness. In the name of Jesus, I command every part of the brain that did go wrong to go right. In the name of Jesus, from today there shall be no more motion sickness. In the name of Jesus, I command all those vestibular cochlear nerves to function normally. In the name of Jesus, there shall be equal balance in your ears and in your head. In the name of Jesus, receive healing from motion sickness today. In the name of Jesus, it ends tonight. It ends on this altar. In the name of Jesus, I release healing. Healing from motion sickness. Healing from motion sickness. In the name of Jesus, every spirit that caused that motion sickness, I command it to leave your bodies. In the name of Jesus, I release healing from motion sickness. In the name of Jesus, be healed from motion sickness. Be healed from motion sickness. Be healed from motion sickness. Be healed. Be healed from motion sickness. Be healed from motion sickness. When I lay my hands on you, you can go back and sit. You're healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed from motion sickness. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing. I release the power of God. I release the power of God in your body. I release the power of God in your system. In the name of Jesus, motion sickness never again. In the name of Jesus, you will testify. Thank you, Jesus. I release healing. I release healing. I release healing in the name of Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Tonight is going to be massive. I thought it was one person, but it's okay. It's okay. Let me tell you the truth. There is somebody here, if I would tell you how the devil has fought for me not to stand here, I know that tonight is massive and it's for somebody. For somebody. For somebody. God's medicine bottle. I didn't know this message was going to cause a lot of commotion in the devil's kingdom. Hmm? I'm going to talk about these components. These components in God's medicine bottle. 
what are the components that give us this healing tonight? The first component, there are seven. I don't know whether I'll have enough time, but we shall see. The first one that is in God's medicine bottle, the name of Jesus. There's a lot of feedback from these things. The name, after I share with you about the name of Jesus, you never take the name of Jesus lightly. You will understand that every time you say in Jesus' name, you're releasing dynamite. The name of Jesus is not like the name of the president. The name of Jesus is not like the name of the Aga Khan. The name of Jesus is the name that is above every name. It's the name which has been given. Philippians chapter 2 says he has been given a name that's above every name. That at the mention of that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. When I understood the power which is in the name of Jesus, I stopped being intimidated by the name of cancer. There's a lot of uh, fear all over the place. A lot of fear. But let me tell you, that name is above cancer. That name is above heart disease. That name is above kidney disease. That name is above allergy. It's above ulcers. That name is above arthritis. And tonight you're going to see arthritis healed instantly. 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 The name of Jesus. When you read Mark chapter 16, 17, it says, and these attesting signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new languages. They will pick up serpents, and even if they drink anything deadly, it won't hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. In my name. That was Jesus speaking. He says, in my name. There is power, children of God. There is power in the name of Jesus. For me, when I lay my hands on you in the name of Jesus, I am surprised if you don't recover. Should I repeat what I say? When I lay my hands on you in the name of Jesus, I expect you to recover because the Bible says so. If you don't recover, there's something in your system. God said, believers shall lay her in my name. In my name. If somebody came here in the name of the president, okay, and they said anything in the name of the president, it will not be that person saying it. It will be as if the president is saying it because that person is speaking in the name. When I want a job, if you want a job in a, in the, let me give an example. There's a time I was chasing my late mother's uh, pension and I went to Ministry of Education and I had been given, I have uh, somebody wrote a cheat to take to the commissioner and he signed it. When I entered the office, the secretary told me, 
put there your papers, come back after two months. That was the kind of attitude. Put them there, come back after two months. I said, okay, but I also have this mes message for the boss. She took the letter for the boss. The boss saw the letter. The boss had never seen me. He saw the letter and who had signed it. He came back and told the secretary, work on the papers of this doctor today and let him go back with them today. The order changed. <laughs> Why did the order change? Because I was, it was no longer me. It was in the name When I say in the name of Jesus, it's no longer about me. When you're praying in the name of Jesus, it's Jesus talking to God about you. Did you hear that? In the, Jesus said in John chapter 14, look at this, John 14 verse 13. It says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified through the Son. Yes, I will grant whatever you ask in my name. Do you see that verse? It's a promise. Jesus said, I will do whatever you ask in my name. Let me give you a secret. Whatever is whatever. When I was laying my hand and releasing healing, I was commanding, I was asking motion sickness to go in the name of Jesus. Jesus said he will do whatever I ask in his name, that the Father will be glorified. So, tonight, I'm going to be asking cancer cells to die. He says he will do whatever I ask in his name. When I ask for a new kidney, he will do it. These days I'm in the business. When you have diabetes, because I have, these days I've discovered why I am a doctor and also in the healing business. To understand where medicine has stopped and introduce God in the picture. So me, when I am laying hands, when you have a back problem, I don't do it haphazardly. I lay hands and I command the discs to be normal. I command the nerves to be normal. When you have diabetes, I understand that the pancreas is not working well, so I lay hands on you and I speak a new pancreas. Because I came to realize that God has spare parts. How many believe me? If Toyota has a spare part, your body has a spare part. Should I say that again? If a Toyota Spatio has a spare part, surely Emily, who is fearfully, and wonderfully made, has some fearful and wonderful spare parts. Yeah. yeah. So Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, I shall do. And that's what we are going to be asked. So when the name of Jesus is an essential gradient of God's medicine. They did not teach this to me in medical school, but it works. The name of Jesus. I have applied the name of Jesus and asthma has been healed. Don't ask me how it works. I know that it works. The name, 
of Jesus. Paul talked about this name. I talked about it in Philippians 2.9. It says, Therefore, because it stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. When you read Romans 10.13, it says, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be what? Saved. And Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. Tonight we are running to that name. You will actually even run for your relatives who are not here. Because I will show you that one component of God's medicine is authority. When you understand authority, you can believe in just the spoken word. And it shall go back to Kanungu and make things work. I'll talk about that guy, a, 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 a centurion. He came before Jesus and says, come and help me. My, but that is point number five. I've not yet reached there. I'll talk about that later. The name. Tell your neighbor the name. the name. When you learn to use the name of Jesus, things shall change. Things shall change. And the name of Jesus worked with another component. I'm still working out the percentages, the concentrations. But the other component is faith in that name. Because there is knowing the name of Jesus, but you don't have faith in that name. If you believe, Jesus said in John 14, 12, I assure you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he himself will be able to do the things that I do and he will do even greater things than this because I go to the Father. Did you hear that? He who believes will do the works that I do. Reverend Henry was describing those works, some of them. John chapter 9 is one of my favorites. I love the whole of it. I love every conversation in John chapter. I told you, for me, I read the Bible in three dimensions. So when I read that story, I, I love the way, the, way, the way Jesus' disciples saw the man who was born blind, and they were quick to try to find out what went wrong. Say, Jesus, is, it, is he the one who sinned? Oh, his parents that he was born blind and Jesus replies them and says neither did he nor his parents sin but that the work of God might be displayed in his life what that tells me is that you might be here and you have a certain issue that you were born with that issue is so that the work of God might be displayed in your life. Amen. Whatever, uh -huh. you have an issue. They said for us in our family, we don't do this. We don't eat this. I have allergy to the cold. I have, you know, whatever. Tonight we are canceling it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you the truth. The Bible says whosoever is in Christ is what? Is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, old things have become new. You don't have to have the allergy that your mother had. You don't have, you don't have to suffer from what your father suffered from. But every time I bathe cold water, I start itching. Every time I eat water, I start what? Today, go back and eat meat, 
go and eat milk, go and drink milk, go and, go and do what you're not able to do. I, I, I say these things, you think, <laughs> you think I'm joking. That's the way you get healed. <coughs> Bible says, believe in his prophets and you'll do what? You'll prosper. You just have to believe me. Go, shave in a little bit. Go, go and do what you're not able to do. Faith in his name. Faith in his name. That was the work. And Jesus told him, he spat in the ground, put mud on his face, said, go and wash. I love it that we have come here to wash. I love that part, that we've come here to wash. You will go back seeing. You'll go back without pain. Amen. Let me demonstrate this. Okay? Can I demonstrate this? Who suffers from a terrible migraine? Even right now you have a terrible migraine. Migraine headache. You, even right now you have it. A terrible migraine. I want to demonstrate that scripture which says he went to the pool of Siloam and he went back seeing. You know sometimes we say these things and you think, ah, that's what the preacher says. This is coming up with a good statement. I want to demonstrate to you that you will go back without the migraine. So who has it? I want to, want to take it away. You have it? Come. Come. I want the one who has it, not the one who thinks they might have it tomorrow. <laughs> you have it? For how long have you had it? On and off. Every day. Even right now you have it. Which side is it? That side. I want to release power of God in your head and the pain will go and will never come back. When Jesus heals us, you, you, had, you saw the line in that song that when you heal, you heal what? Completely. Everything about tonight is massive. When he heals, he heals completely and he heals permanently. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I discharge power in your head. I reduce the tension in your head. Whatever was causing that migraine, I command it out of your head. I command every pain to leave your head. Every migraine, leave and never return. In the name of Jesus, amen. Uh -huh. Is it there now? Is it there now? Eh? No. It's not there. It's not there. Your clapping is lousy. For me, I celebrate. I celebrate every miracle. What is, some, what is your small thing is somebody's miracle? Is it there all the time? has been there the whole day. Even right now it's there. Right now. How does it always start? Do you see like stars? No. Hey. It, comes whenever I start it comes whenever you start reading. That's a devil. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came that you may have life and life in its fullness. I release life in its fullness in your head and I command this headache to leave, never to return. You go back without the headache. In the name of Jesus. Check. Is it there? <laughs> eh? It's not there. It has gone. It has gone. Yeah. It's there. Is it because of the glasses or the head? It's the head. It's always there. Even now. Not now. It's not. Now you're somehow. It's not there. It's not there. 
Now, if it's not there, how will I show these people that it has gone if it's not there? Okay, it will not come early tomorrow morning. I cancel that appointment in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Do you have a in the name of Jesus? They don't come back in Jesus' name. Tell me as you have been experiencing emotional healing, emotional sickness rather. Is is that is it is that a headache? I called people for headache. I will call you. I will pray for that. I will call for it. You listen to the instructions very what? Carefully. Let me tell you. Let me give you a, a small secret. When I mention something, that's where, that's where the power is flowing. You get it? Eh? So, don't make me authentic. Even now the headache is there. Which side? That side. You headache. I discharge the power of God in this head and I command you headache to live, never to return. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Is it there? Eh? It's there. It's gone. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, even yours is coming. How many are loving tonight already? Um, I, I was just doing an EG. EG. These things work. God's medicine bottle. It is cheaper. It is quicker. It has no side effects. It is permanent. That was the fourth which I learned last week, the other week. Cheaper, quicker, no side effects, permanent. The Peter and John, they understood how to use this combination with devastating effect. In Acts chapter 3, you remember the story? Just after Pentecost, Peter and John are coming into the temple. They come to the gate called Beautiful and they find who? A man who has been crippled from birth. This man is busy begging. I believe that five weeks before, the Peter and John would have put a coin on his plate. But this was post Pentecost. Hallelujah. When they saw the man with his plate asking for coins, Peter and John came to the man and said, look at us. Silver and gold we don't have, but what we have, we give unto you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. This man had been used to sitting for a long time. He stayed seated. Yes. Have you ever read the story? They told him, in the name of Jesus, get up. You see, sometimes you have been in a certain condition for so long that even when they come and declare to you that you are healed, you prefer to stay in that condition because that condition has defined so much about you you have fellowships about that condition. You have friends around that condition. You have 
There are people, there's a time I was praying for somebody and I knew that that person would not be healed because they were benefiting from the condition. <laughs> yes. You're praying for somebody who is getting some aid from Bazungu because of the condition. And you expect that person to believe for healing. How can he be healed and he refuses, he stops getting aid? You're praying for somebody whom they are writing a story about in the newspaper about how they are coping with the situation. And they are becoming a celebrity on how to cope with the condition. Some people don't get healed because they don't want it so bad. Yeah. Guy had been by the pool, that guy in John 5, he had been by the pool for 38 years. 38 years, he's busy saying, every time I want to get, can you imagine? 38 years. He was trying to get in for 38 years. Sincerely, wouldn't he have told the guy, just kick me and I fall into the thing? I mean, th think about it. 38 years, you should have thought about all the tricks in the book. Okay? If this one fails, this one fails, you just tell the guy, you know what? When the angel comes, just push me into the thing. I'll just land into the thing, I come out healed. For 38 years, nothing. Jesus comes and asks him, do you want to get well? He did not say yes. He said, every time I want to get it, can you imagine? <laughs> Tonight, you must badly want it. You must be tired of that condition. You must be tired of it. There's a time I used to struggle with chest pain. I struggled with it quite a lot. Do you know why, why it stayed a long time? I used to use it not to participate in sports at school. When it would be cross-country, running, I would tell the headmaster, you know. <laughs> and maybe some of you have a certain condition you use for leverage. Say, so, you know, me, I can't, you know, I can't wake up in the mornings for morning glory. You know, I'm asthmatic. I can't go for morning prep, you know, a mathematic. You use it for leverage. My friend, you must get tired of the thing. You must get tired. The Bible is full of stories that teach us that the guys who got an encounter with Jesus, they got sick and tired of being sick and tired. In Mark chapter 2, I love those four men. They brought their friend. Those guys were sick and tired. I think they had been carrying that man everywhere. They are carrying him the toilet, carrying him where? And then they heard that Jesus was around. They must have told themselves, it's our last night for carrying this man. <laughs> have you ever thought about it? So they come carrying the man. And when they reach at the door, they find that the room is so full, the ushers tell them, sorry, you can't enter. The overnight is already packed to capacity. The guy said, no, 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 no. This is the last day we are carrying this man. They look around. One of them says, I don't know who brought the idea. That guy must have been as tricky, as, as stubborn as I used to be five years, ten years ago. The guy said, he said, what? He said, <laughs> Must have told them, there are no ushers up there. <laughs> then they look around, they look around, they look around. Now, Jesus is busy preaching. And suddenly they start seeing concrete and sand. Boom. <laughs> Boom, boom, boom. As I was telling you, blessed are the meek. And then, 
they see a hole in the roof. And then these guys are saying, this is our last day of carrying this man. They were tired. This man was not talking. These guys were tired on his behalf. You must be tired about some, some conditions at home. You must be tired about some, you know, you know that ev nobody ever gets a master's at home. That nobody ever does it. You must be tired. That you must be tired tonight. That nobody ever gets married. That every woman, every girl at home, that she cohabits. Even you, you're beginning to show tendencies. You must be tired. Miracles happen for people who are expecting them. You must be tired. You must say enough is enough. No more cohabiting in my family. Enough is enough. We also have to have a wedding in our family. Enough is enough. Yes. You need to look in your family and you won't need to look far to see that there are certain familiar trends. Certain familiar trends at home. So and so, they reach this age, they start getting, that they start having a pain in the back. Exactly. Uncle so and so, it came. Uncle so and so, it came. Uncle so and so. And even you, as you approach that age, it's beginning to come. It's a familiar demonic trend. You must be tired of it tonight. You must be tired. Let me tell you, when there is a, a trend of polygamy, some of you who have, you come from polygamous families, you have to be tired of it. Other, let me tell you, demons don't die. The demons which were attacking Noah and all those people, the demons who were attacking Adam, they are still around. They are still around. That's why you hear that so-and-so in the family died of this and now it is on the ankle, and now it's on whatever. Before the guy dies, the demon just comes out and is looking for the next person in the family. You must be tired. If you're not tired, you could be next. But tonight we are canceling all those things in the name of Jesus. <laughs> tell your neighbor you must be tired. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I was in university, I used to have a number of, I would be in relationships. <laughs> look at how they are looking at me. Look at, look at them. Ah, let me talk about the name of Jesus. Look at them. I would be in relationships. And then I would just reach a point and say, I'm tired. And I would go. I would, I would just get tired of a relationship and I would just, the way you just do about turn. And I would start a new leaf. No regrets, nothing. What, I would just start a new leaf. And then I'm in another relationship. Until I reached a point, I started praying and fasting. Remember, I was a man of God. I was praying for people, everything. Everything was going on well except that area. Do I have a witness in this play? You cast out demons, you speak in tongues, you do what? But there's one area. You come for overnight, you do what? You sing what? But there's an area. So I consecrated the fast. 40 days. Started praying and fasting and said, This, I got tired. I said, This must change. Must change. Somewhere in the 40 days fasting, I got a call from my stepmother. My stepmother, out of the blue, she started giving me the family tree, which I never knew. Told me, By the way, your great grandfather, he was a catechist. And he backslid from being a catechist because he married the second wife. And then he got the third wife. I think by the time he died, he had four or five. So the spirit 
of polygamy was manifesting in relationships here and there not working. When you have that habit of just breaking people and saying, anyway, me, I just said to move on. My friend, <laughs> you're going to get married and then you decide to move on. <laughs> that thing must be broken tonight in the name of Jesus. Am I talking to somebody here? We must break. You're in the supermarket. You start seeing certain things. Say, I wish I could take it. It's a spirit of stealing, which is a... <laughs> you're looking around, you're looking around. You're starting asking, but do these cameras really work? They work, my brother. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, the cameras work. <laughs> Tell them, is he talking about somebody you know? <laughs> Those guys were tired. Tell them, they were tired. They lowered the man down. The whole service went silent. Suddenly, where there was no room, room was created. Let me tell you, when you are tired, room shall be created. Yeah. When you are tired, room shall be created. Suddenly, everybody was saying, no, 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 no. You know, there's when you go to a place and people give you that look of, you don't have where to sit. You. But when the man is being lowered from up this and the Bible says when Jesus saw their faith, when he saw, your faith must come to the place where it can be seen. Faith cannot be private all the time. It must come to the place where it can be seen. When he saw their faith, he looked at the paralytic and <laughs> he said, your sins are forgiven. That guy was so sinful, sin paralyzed him. Sin can paralyze. Some of you, we pray for you, we lay hands on you and the thing does not go. We lay hands and things do not go because of unforgiveness. Because of bitterness. Certain diseases are because of sin. When Jesus healed the man by the, the man who was by the pool, he told him, Go and sin no more, lest something worse happens to you. Certain conditions are because of the state of your soul. That's why 3 John verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you will prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. That is 3 John verse 2. Healing in your body Prosperity in your life starts by healing in your soul. Are we together? Some of you, you need to forgive somebody. And I speak right now. Some of you, you have somebody hurt you many years ago. And just told yourself, me and that person, we are done. Family meetings, you don't talk to them. Don't give them a call. Nothing. Me and that person, we are done. And forgiveness opens the door for the enemy to attack your life. They pray for you, it goes, it comes back. It goes, it comes back. Because and forgiveness and sin and confess sin gives the devil a foothold. When you have sin that is not confessed in your life, that sin acts as an airfield for the devil. Every time the devil is looking for where to land, your life has an airfield. You're looking so serious. Is it okay? 
Is it okay? They lowered. Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees, they were always, they are the ones who are taking room. The Pharisees were always there. They were always there taking space. They said, who is this that forgives sin? Who is this? And Jesus heard them. He knew their thoughts. And the Bible says, but to show you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he spoke to the man and said, pick up your mat and go home. He healed the man to show that he could forgive. He healed him to show that he was God who could forgive. When God does a miracle for you, he's telling you that he can deal with your soul also. That is the thing. When we talk about God's medicine bottle, when we talk about God healing people, he does not heal you just for the sake. He heals you to show you that he wants to also heal your soul. Because the greatest miracle is not getting healed of a back problem. The greatest miracle is having your name written in the book of life. Yes. Because you can be healed and go to hell. You don't want to be the most healthy person in hell. <laughs> ha, that's a powerful point. That revelation just landed. You don't want to be the most healthy person in hell. You can be healed of all conditions. But if you don't give your life to Jesus, you will enter hell as the most healthy person. <laughs> but, oh, uh, when you ask Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior, you will be healed spirit, soul, and body. Clap your hands to Jesus. You know, I'm getting better as the sermon continues. I was, I was feeling bad, but I'm believing God. Hallelujah. I am, the devil is a liar. I told the devil, I must preach. I must heal the sick. The devil, I, when I was there, I got pain in all aspects of my body. I was laying hands there, way up. But I'm getting okay. Because the things that we teach you, they must work for us also. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus healed that guy because those four guys were tired. You must be tired. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus got tired. Zacchaeus attempted to see Jesus so many times. But they were tall guys. I think Jesus' disciples were very tall. <laughs> the man, had, he tried. Until one day, came up with a plan. You know, when you're short, I used to be short. When you're short, you have to devise strategies. When you're short, you'll miss out in the dining hall. You'll miss out what? You have to come up with strategies. The guy, he was an important government official. He was a tax collector. He was the commissioner general of Uganda Revenue Authority of those days. But he got so tired that he did not suffer the embarrassment of climbing on top of a tree. Some of us, we are not healed because we are still too diplomatic. We don't encounter God because we are still too diplomatic. They call people to come to the front and say, how do I go there? I mean me. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes <laughs> you call people forward to pray for them and you see the way somebody is there in front and you just realize they are not receiving They are in front of you. They are looking at the nails that they have come to receive from God. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you must, be tired. you must be tired. The guy climbed on top of a sycamore tree. Imagine everybody coming. 
and they found a guy. It was a divine setup. Do you know that that sycamore tree could have been trampled by goats and cows and everything? I believe so much that there were angels that patrolled that sycamore tree. Because God had a divine appointment with a man who was too short to see him. Oh, some of you don't know that God has had his angels patrolling St. Francis Chapel from when you are in primary because you had to come here. Maybe some of us could have died in certain accidents, but God had angels patrolling around us because we had to be alive at this time when you're in Makere. That's another sermon. The sycamore trees of your destiny. <clears throat> you must be tired. Let me talk about one more tired, two, two more tired people. But Myers. Blind. Can you imagine being blind all your life? You have a wife you have never seen. Children you have never seen. And one day, he heard that Jesus was passing by. The Bible says he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the ushers, that's what I said, please, keep quiet, keep quiet. You are quenching the anointing. Keep quiet, be quiet. But the Bible says he shouted even the more. When he shouted, Jesus, you think Jesus was not hearing him? He was. But he wanted to see how tired he was. You came for the first overnight and it didn't happen. Will you come back? Eh? You came for the first prayer meeting and nothing happened. Will you come for the next prayer meeting? You came and the first preacher bored you. Will you come for the next preacher? That's the shouting we are talking about. Will you keep coming and keep coming and keep coming until you receive your miracle? That's what we see in that guy's shouting. When he shouted them all, Jesus turned and said, bring him. I love that scene. The ushers who had told him to keep quiet, they came smiling. He's calling you. <laughs> Do you know that God can bless your life and people in your home, in your family who had written you off, they suddenly claim to be well associated with you? <laughs> Woo! God can bless your life so much that people who had written you off, me, I know, let me tell you the truth, I know that in heaven, they are my relatives and whatever. They will be telling God that on earth who are his uncles. <laughs> because the Bible says that those of us who win souls, we shall shine like the stars. In heaven, I'll be shining like the star. My uncles will be saying, that star, that, that one. <laughs> I was the first generation uncle. <laughs> Let me tell you the truth. God is able to bless your life. God is able to turn you. God is able to give you a new page. He's able to change your story. God's medicine bottle. The third component. Faith in his name. Faith. Do you know the Bible says in Mark chapter 9 verse 23 and Jesus said if you can do anything all things are possible to him who believes. Did you hear that? All things are what? All things are what? All things are what? All things are what? I want to demonstrate something. All things are what? Possible. 
is that somebody like you have like a back problem and in spite of all kinds of medications you could have even had surgery but the pain has just stayed there it just it just can't go or uh, yeah let's start with back problem you have a terrible back problem and it just stays there in spite of you have just decided to live with it i want to show you that all things are possible it is possible for you to be free of that back pain is that such a person and i, I pray for you back problem yes you come you come and i please remember the instruction i gave okay note that you're thinking the devil might give you the back problem or something. No, you have it. What, what are you not able to do because of it? You cannot bend. When you bend, it pains. Yeah. Yes, it pains. You've been standing for long. For how long have you had it? Since you are in primary, yes. the devil is a what? It's a liar. So you tried what medication? Okay. You went like to hospital. They did scans, everything. They did it. Uh huh. Then they gave me some medicine. Uh -huh. Which hospital was that? It was in Mulago. Mulago. Yes. Uh. Then I tried some some dragon. Dragon. Yes. What is dragon? I Dragon is it, isn't it the one they talk about in the bus? Yeah. 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 It's like Vicks. Yeah. You also used Vicks. <laughs> Let me tell you people. The Bible says all things are what? Possible with God. Luke chapter 18 verse 27 says what is impossible with men is possible with God. All I'm trying to show you is that these scriptures are alive. This Bible is not Abbot. <laughs> How many remember Abbot? The Bible is not, what was that biology textbook? The big one in A level. Huh? There used to be a big textbook. Huh? Functional approach. What was the author? There was biology by Chilton. Then there was biological sciences. It was the biggest, red. The Bible is not like biological sciences. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. John chapter 6, verse what? 63. The words of Jesus, they are spirit and they are life. When Jesus says that my words, they are life, he means it. And you're going to see what happened, sister. The injection. The injection. It hurts all the time. You can you bend with it? Or you feel pain? The Lord Jesus wants to heal you. Uh, I want to. Even you, it's for a long time? Yeah. What happened? Um, I, I'm a nurse. Yeah. And so I was lifting a patient. Yes. And I just got a slip disc. Slipped disc. Yeah. And so it pains all the time now. If you put it on immediately, you get pain. Yeah. High heels. Is anybody having a high heel? Afterwards, I want her to put on a high heel. Because the pain comes when she's putting on a high heel. <laughs> My one defense is you. Do you know that song? Jesus, 
my one defense is you I lay in the morning till late at night my only day let's lift our hands and worship Jesus for one moment my one defense is you Jesus my one defense is you just focus on Jesus child of God I lay in the morning I lay in the morning till late at night my one defense is you one last time my one defense my one is you Jesus my one defense is you he's our defense I lay in the morning till late at night I release the power of God my one defense is you Just stretch your hands, please, and pray for these people, please. We are doing this together. It's not a one-man show. All of us, if it attacks you, it, if it attacks them, it could attack you tomorrow or something. Lay hands on her, the her back, in the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, I cancel every effect of that injection. In the name of Jesus, I release the power of God in that back. In the name of Jesus, Karo Shabragena Brozoko Brajeta, I cancel Shiatika in the name of Jesus. Every nerve I command it to function normally. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing in your back. In the name of Jesus. She's healed. Check there where the pain used to be. Check there. Is it there? Is it there? She's healed. My one defense is you. It's not there. It has been there all the time. Most of the time. What? Touch there. Confirm. Is it there? There was. They did an injection there. Three. You tell me whether if you feel the pain. Pain not there. Jesus is Lord. Go and sit. You're healed. Sees you. She got a sleep disc. We, are, we want to put that disc back in place. She's a nurse. She was lifting a patient. The disc slipped. We put that disc back. We do surgery on this back in the name of Jesus. We put that disc back. We release healing in this back in the name of Jesus. Every pain be gone. Till late at night. And we command this disc, every vertebrae to be normal in the name of Jesus. Every nerve passage be normal. You disc get back in place. It's done. It is done. Hallelujah.
the morning. Check there, is it there? You were you able to bend? So right now, how do you feel in the back? You feel fine. You need to carry somebody, like a baby or something. Hey, baby. You are a nurse. So when you'd put on the high heels, you'd feel pain. Can you? Do you fit in those ones? Yeah, yeah. It's too small. She had the sleep disc. She's a nurse. We understand these things. My wife is a nurse. Carrying something, the disc slipped. We just put back the disc in place. Don't ask me how it happened. The name of Jesus. No, it squeezes. So if, if you bent, you would feel pain. While standing. Let's bend a bit and see. I lay in the morning till late at night. My one defense is you. Up, up, up. Do you feel any pain? <laughs> My one defense is you. This is Jesus. I lay in the morning till late at night. Give me my hanky, please. Any pain? No pain. No pain. Jesus has healed her. Go and see. For how long? I hope I'm not taking a lot of your time. Eh? I'm just demonstrating that all things are possible with God. And this is a secret. I'm not special. What I'm doing, you can do if you're a believer. Go back and practice it. Can I give you another secret? If I lay hands on somebody who is sick, I don't lose anything, they don't lose anything. I don't make them worse. I can only make them better. Because most of you have those voices which tell you, what if it doesn't happen? <laughs> I deal with those voices all the time. What if it doesn't happen? I also ask them, what if it happens? <laughs> if it doesn't happen, let me tell you what I do. I go to the next person. If I'm praying for somebody and they die, I go to the next person. Have I killed them? Fence is you. The pain has been for how long? It's going. It's going. Let me tell you. It's going. What happened? When you carry heavy things. I need a heavy thing. Hey. Lay hands. Back, back. Do, do, we, we're going to do a pelvic. Put your hands on the anterior superior iliac spine. That's why I married the nurse. When I say anterior superior iliac spine, she knows what I'm talking about. In the name of Jesus, I release the power of God in your pelvis. The problem is in the pelvis. We release the power of God in your pelvis. And the power of God is rotating the pelvis and putting it back in place. Every nerve that was out of place, we bring it back in place. We release the healing virtue of God. This pain leaves. In Jesus' name.
Check. Yeah, shake. Is it there? Karimukache. Aha, you are telling the truth. Harum Shija Kagamra Yesum Karimukache. Jesus prayed for him. He says, Do you see? He says, I see people, but they are like what? Trees. And that is always an encouragement for me. If Jesus could lay hands on the guy and the guy sees trees, how about me? In the name of Jesus. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, we command every pain to leave. We release healing in your body. Every pain leaves your back. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It's gone. It's gone. She's healed. The Lord wants to heal you. The Lord wants to heal you. You told me that it's been for, since when? Since you are in primary. Now you are married, you have children. How many? You've had pain for all those years. You can't bend. Whenever you bend, you feel pain. When you're washing, you just sit. These things are not for us. To God. Be the glory, we release healing to God. Be the glory, I reconstruct this back in the name of Jesus. I put the discs back in place in the name of Jesus. We rearrange those nerves, those blood vessels. In the name of Jesus, be totally healed by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Jesus has done it. Jesus has done it. The pain for all those years it goes and doesn't return we discharge the power of God uh -huh. I can't come so obsess which are you For the things he has done. Harunga ka mubaba. What a mighty God we serve. Every spirit of infirmity leave this blood. In the name of Jesus. Lord, it is your will to heal. It's your will to heal and you're healing her. And every pain you're taking it away. Every pain you're taking it away. Every pain is going away. That spirit is living. Come on, pray for her. It's a devil. The spirit of infirmity leaves. Pray for her, children of God. You spirit of infirmity, you live. You live. You live. Yes. Straighten up your back. Be healed, your back. What a mighty God. just got healed. You just Eh? Ah, Baharasha, Shura, Ura, Tachasha, Shura. 
Mwendo la jangu na churo mruchika nda ure la hantambu emu. Hahara kushasha since primary. Hat you bend and see whether the pain is there. Is it there? Ah uh ah. -uh. I love her. Do it again. Angels bow before him. Heaven under the door. Him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Congratulations. She's healed. The angels But you are not giving God the glory. Listen to this. You see, is the pain there? Small. It, it comes in the morning as you wake up, or when I'm going to bed, it feels much pain. Is it there now? In the name of Jesus, that appointment that that pain has with you for the mornings, I cancel it. That appointment that the pain has with you for the before you go to bed, I cancel it. It shall not happen again in Jesus' name. It has been for five years. Five years. Yes, I have done so an X-ray. I've combined it in the center. I've done the miracle for the Yes. It has failed. In fact, the Lord, I told him I knew him at 24. I gave him the chance. I didn't expect him to talk about my Let me tell you, God sent me for you. In the name of Jesus, this five year old pain I command it to go. I release the power of God in your back and I make this back pain free in the name of Jesus. Today, the Lord Jesus heals you. The power of God is touching you, brother. The power of God flows in your back and puts all these discs in place. <laughs> Be healed. Check. You tell the people, you know, I want, Pastor, I want you, I want him to tell you the story of what has happened, so that you know that Jesus is in business. We are not doing comedy or whatever, those ones go to comedy, fun factory. We are here in the theater. Right now, there are orthopedic surgeries going on. Kazire, Taebwa. All those people fail. But we have a name that is above every name. Tell us briefly. Praise God, Church. I'm Nelson Ikamutsha. It is my first time to come here. And my neighbor, Daniel, it's what I had told him to pray for me, a chest and back. I've had this pain for five years. I'm a student of Makere, but I completed two years back. 
have so many x-rays at home from Kampala Imaging Center here at Kavude. You've said you're a doctor, I hope you know Dr. Besage. I've seen Dr. Besage so many times. He's a lecturer. I know Dr. Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, when the preacher touched my back, I felt the pain getting off. Let me tell you a secret. Diseases have legs. They can walk away. Let me say it again because some of you didn't understand the gravity of what I said. Diseases have legs and they can walk away. In Matthew chapter 8, eh, they can even flee. Yours is going to flee. Yours is going to flee. In Matthew chapter 8, there was a man who had leprosy. The Bible says when Jesus touched him, that the leprosy left him. The leprosy left him. Is it there, sir? The back pain has walked away. Five years. At the x-ray. Go and burn them. They just showed you the problem. They never helped. But Jesus. You have a cannula. What happened? Huh? Malaria. You also have back pain. Because of the malaria, or it has been there before? Mm. Even now it's paining. Come and lay hands. Those of you who are in ministry, if it is a lady, let a lady lay hands. You don't want to be a victim of ministry. Brothers, you don't want to lay hands until you're a victim of ministry. That was a small tutorial for ministers. Jesus is going to heal you. I start off by killing every parasite. In the name of Jesus, I kill every plasmodium. I destroy every pyrogen in the name of Jesus. I stabilize your hypothalamic set point in the name of Jesus. I release healing in your back. Release the power of God in your back. Be healed. Be healed. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive healing. The power of God is touching her back. She's healed. The power is all over your body. You're healed, sister. You're healed. You're healed. Is it there? not there. She's healed. I'm showing you that with God all things are what? Possible. What you see God doing for them he can do in your family. What you see God, the God who heals backs can heal marriages. The God who heals backs instantly can deliver you from pornography. Do you know what we want to do? I want to pray for addictions after this. The Lord wants to set free people from addictions. Go and sit. You're healed. What is the problem? Back problem. Back problem. Are you a believer? 
you're saved? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes, you are. I want to show you that when you're a believer filled with the Holy Spirit, you carry the power of God. I want to show you what you will do for yourself every time you get a condition at home. Lay hands on yourself. So put your hands on your back. The back pain has been for how long? You've had C-section. You know, the first time I came for an overnight here, the secretary of the chaplain was, is she here by the she was healed. She had had pain since the first baby, and she was healed. That pain of that C-section, put your hand there. Now say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You pain. You pain. I command you. I command you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Get out of my back. Get out of my back. Every effect of surgery. Every effect of surgery. Be gone out of my body. Be called out of my body. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Check yourself. Is it there? The pain is gone. You saw that? What I demonstrated with her, if you are a believer, the Bible says believers shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Let me tell you, as far as God is concerned, the believer is the first line of defense against sickness. You must run to the believer before you run to the hospital. Go and tell them I said it. Me, I treat myself when these hands have failed. I lay it, I lay it. <laughs> Even my children know that when they fall sick, they run to daddy. Not because he's a pediatrician, but because he's a believer. He will lay hands. They lay hands. My son, the one in kindergarten, the one in middle class. When the teacher falls sick, he comes to my son in middle class, say, lay hands on me and pray for me. We must teach our children what they never taught us. Children are like an empty disc. Whatever you put on them, they get. We must teach our children that these things work. They grow up knowing when you're sick, you go to the man of God. The Bible says, is any of you sick? Let him look for the church elders. Not let him look for the phone number of Dr. Son. But most of you have the number. If you say, I'm sick. I have the number of Dr. So and so. I have the number of Dr. You have the number of the Dr. So and so, the number of Dr. So. You even have the number of the mortuary attendant just in case. <laughs> just in case. The back pain has been for how long? It's been for nearly three years. Nearly three years. The pain, they feel the pain disappears for some time and it comes back. It even distracts me from reading and sometimes. So even now it's there. Yeah, yeah. There. You come and put your hand there. Huh? Stretch your hands like that. Stretch your hands like that. No. Stretch them straight. Incredible God. Incredible God. It will not come back. Incredible God. I release power in this upper chest, these are the thoracic vertebrae. I command this thoracic vertebrae to function normally. In the name of Jesus. And this spirit of infirmity that keeps coming back, we close the door in Jesus' name. She will never feel it again. Jesus' name. You see what's happening? This arm is now equal to this arm. You're healed. Check the pain. Is it there?
Go and check from wherever. Huh? Some people come for drama. Huh? The chest and the back. The chest and the back. Yeah. For how long? Since senior three, you're now in which? You're now in senior five. The two years, chest problem. You chest pain, leave. Uh, I release every costochondritis. In the name of Jesus, every inflammation, go. Now in the back. Let's go to the back. In the name of Jesus, every back pain leave. You leave you back pain and you never return. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, she's healed. Check the chest. Is the pain there? No. How about the back? Charge and go and sit. Uh -huh. What is the matter? For how long? Are you praying for these people? Since 2013. You see, you tried medicine and everything. Why I came to talk about God's medicine bottle is because it is superior. It is superior. Don't go walk out on me. I'm still preaching. You know, walking out, whatever. But it's okay. Me, I, I can preach until the whole church is empty. I continue. I'll be with my wife. I'll preach to her. Say the last point is this one. <laughs> the chest and the lower back. You know, Jesus wants to heal you. Jesus, what were you not able to do? Is, what is there that when you do it, you feel pain? Even now, the pain is there in the back, even in the chest. In the name of Jesus, I want defense. Is you. I release the power of God in your chest. I release the power of God in your back. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing. We speak healing. Chest pain leave and not return. Back pain leave and never return. In the name of Jesus. Yes, you're healed. Is the pain there? Otambia, because you see, I'm a doctor. If in medicine, if it doesn't work in outpatient, we make them inpatient. In with God's medicine bottle, we can also give another dose. But the pain is gone. She's healed. Clap your hands to Jesus. Ah, uh, you are a believer, eh? You are a believer, saved, you have back pain, you have back pain, you have back pain. Put your hands on her back, put your hands on her back, put your hands on her back. For my wife, I can lay hands because she's my wife. In the name of Jesus, I discharge the power of God. I release healing in all these backs. In the name of Jesus. It is done. Check. Is the back pain there? It's not there. Is it there? Is it there? Yours is different. Can you go and see it? I like her. Okay? Uh -huh. What is the matter? They are healed. Clap your hands to Jesus. So it's there all the time. 
Come, can you please stand up a little bit? Stand up, Martin Kakunjira. Stand up a little bit. Stand up a little bit. Stretch a little bit. Because the night is still wrong. I'm getting better, so the night is still... Stretch a bit if you want to go for a short call, go and come back. It is just three. Is that thing right? Just three. We are still going, baby. Stretch a bit. Let's worship God. Is you Ale in the morning till late at night? My one defense is you. Where is your mom? Men are blessed by the overnight so far. If you are if you are awake, you can sit. If you feel awake, you can sit. <laughs> you see, I would have continued preaching, but let me tell you the truth. Sometimes what people need is not an impressive sermon. What people need is a touch from Jesus. I can come here and give you seven points of being healed, seven steps of getting your miracle, and you go back without it. You know? I can come and teach you about 21 steps to your breakthrough, and you go away without it. But I'm more satisfied and will be more satisfied if you go away with it. And let me tell you what the Lord really is doing tonight. The past overnights have been coming and ministering to you, healing and whatever. But tonight, the Lord is showing you that you can also do it. What you are seeing us doing, me and my wife, you can do it. I tell you, I want you to believe it. You can do it. This young man has had pain for nine years. Let me tell you, even if I give 20 reasons of a breakthrough and he goes back with the pain, It won't be good. So how many want us to agree together and we pray together with him that that pain goes? Nine years of pain. Please, stretch your hand and pray for him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I lay my hand around you, right now I am discharging the power of God. That's the power of God you're feeling. That's the power of God you're feeling in your body. It's like electricity. 
that electricity, it's like it's straightening up your legs. You feel it? That's the power of God. It's moving in your muscles, getting them out of spasm. Are you, see, are you people seeing the power of God? That's the power of God touching you. You know what they do in surgery, straightening up legs, blood vessels, what? The power of God is doing it for you. In the name of Jesus, God is putting your body back together. Nine years of pain is no more today. The fire of God is destroying every work of the enemy. Look at that, how God anointed Jesus and he went about doing good, in particular healing all who are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. This Jesus is here today, Christ in me, the hope of glory. This Jesus is touching you, is healing you. The legs are healed. The back is healed by the power of God. The discs are healed by the power of God. Oh my God. Early in the morning till late at night, my one defense is you. The power of God is all over you, brother. The power of God, the, by the time the power of God is done with you, this is how God does his surgery. Come on, stretch your hands towards him. This is, uh, it was a spirit of premature death which wanted to steal his life. We command it to go. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of premature death goes. I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Muscles be healed. Muscles be healed. You spirit of epilepsy, go in the name of Jesus. Spirit of epilepsy, go. Be gone. Be gone. You spirit of epilepsy. You spirit of epilepsy, be gone. Be gone. Be gone, you false spirit. In the name of Jesus. My God. You know what? You're healed, man. You're healed. I want you to check yourself a bit. Sharabaka. Nine years of pain. Nine years. Uh -uh. Do some, I know you're a fit guy. Do some press ups. Look at the smile. Look at it. Let me tell you. This smile can bring me back to Kampala for another overnight. Just this smile. I love your smile, man. I'm just, I want to first enjoy the smile. <laughs> Praise God, church. I'm Enoch Lumala, order from Mobs. I got this back pain back in 2010 when I was still young. I couldn't bend. I couldn't do push-ups that I've just done now. I think I last done this 2010 or 2009 before I got the sickness that caused me this. I got a partial incision. I couldn't. Me, just moving from my seat, I could just black out. So when we went to the doctors, they say this, you know what? You know someone treating you, but he locks in a room, 
whereby he's going to put the machine so that you can't be treated. That's what happened to me. I couldn't bend. And I can't believe it right now that I can bend. <laughs> The smile of the night is this one. How many agree? Because he lives, I confess to more. Stand up and give God the glory because He lives. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. God sent his son. God sent his son. Come and I tell you something. You. You. Yes. Come and I tell you something. Hey, la la la. that tonight is your night tonight is your night you are not going back with it you can sit, you can sit ha ha do you want to know that you carry the power of God? come, come You carry the power. This lady is the one who is going to heal you. This one. How long have you had the problem? Three years. What happened? When you are washing. All the time. Even now it's there. She's going to lay hands on your back. And the back pain will go. Say, in the name of Jesus, I command every problem in the back to be gone. I command every pain to be gone. In the name of Jesus, 
I speak healing in your back in the name of Jesus. I command every nerve. Look at that. I command every nerve. You carry power. I command every blood vessel to be no more in the name of Jesus. Right now, I do surgery to your back. I bring healing to your back. As a child of God, be healed. Never suffer again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now turn and tell her you're healed. You tell her you are healed. That's how they do it. You tell her you are healed. Then you tell her, check yourself. She's healed. You're healed. Yes. <laughs> Clap your hands to Jesus. Look at her. She will, you will never be the same. She will never be the same. Look at her. She's, she's in tears. She didn't know she had that power. You have this power. So the back pain has been for how long? <laughs> Make a prayer. Say, Lord, do it for me also. When you discover who you are, when you discover what you have, she will never be the same. She will never be the same. Cut now what has happened there. Okay. It's okay. Since Feb, what happened? Put your hand there in the name of Jesus. You back pain, leave. So, in the name of Jesus, back pain never come to my body. I refuse you in Jesus' name. Cover her properly, please. Lay your hands. She's just under the baptism. And me. Be healed in Jesus' name. You're healed, sister. You're healed. Is it there? Is it there? It's gone. In Jesus' name. She is the only one who has said thank you. You remember the ten lepers? One of them came back and said thank you. She's the only one who has said thank you. Hmm? <laughs> There's a secret in thanksgiving. Jesus taught about it. Three years. Three years. It's there all the time. Aha. Diodeno ulcers. Glorious God, beautiful, you have it also. Excellent God, we bow before the throne. Now, this lady, we want to heal her of diodeno ulcers. I want to show you how they heal diodeno ulcers. So, in the name of Jesus, I command every ulcer to close. In the name of Jesus. I command your body and all your organs to be normal in the name of Jesus. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your duodenum is normal. I command you, the walls of the duodenum to be normal in the name of Jesus. Every pain from this ulcer 
be gone. In the name of Jesus, I release the power in your diodenum, in your body. In the name of Jesus, never again shall you suffer from this pain. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're healed. Check yourself. You should have asked her, check yourself. Is the pain there? Hmm? It has gone. You've just healed the odeno ulcers. Clap for her. She's just healed the odeno ulcers. What just happened, the treatment for it is called triple therapy. You take three kinds of drugs and you take them for two weeks. She just got healed there. Cheaper, quicker, no side effects, it's permanent. Now, let me tell you what God said. Tonight is your night. Every pain is going. I release the power of God in your hands. In the name of Jesus, I heal these hands from arthritis. In the name of Jesus, I command every cartilage to get back into normal. I command the power of God in your cartilages. Bring the other hand also, put it there. I release the power of God in your cartilages. There is the power of God. Never again. I release the power of God in your cartilages. I release you from every tendinitis, from every problem in the ligaments. Spirit of arthritis, leave. Spirit of arthritis, you go. This is the last day in this body. In the name of Jesus, I speak life in every joint. You know, he's giving you joints of an adolescent. Your joints will be younger than your total age. Shakaraba. I speak new joints. New joints in the hands, in the elbows, in the wrist, in the interpharyngeal joints, metacarpal joints. I release new joints. Every erosion, restore it back to normal in the name of Jesus. We speak life. No more arthritis. Even in your shoulders, I release life. I release life. This is a new day. This is a new day. Check those hands. How are they? How are they? They are lighter. For the first time in how many years? 35 years. In the name of Jesus, every pain be gone. Every spirit of arthritis, I command you to go. Spirit of arthritis, go. Spirit of arthritis, go. Stretch out your hands like this. Stretch out your hands. Just do like this. Find rest. My soul, keep doing it. In Christ, I 
Shata Braka, you're being healed. No. This is your day, sister. When the oceans yeah. You're going above that storm. I will be still. I will be still. No, you are God. I will be still. No, you are God. How do you feel? It's, it's completely gone, this side. Uh -huh. Now this side. Come, 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 come. Let's heal her. Shaka Brasa. He's never again. have closed the door to arthritis in your life. We have closed the door. It's gone. For the first time in 35 years. For the first time in 35 years, no pain. You know, your pain has been my pain all this time. I've been believing God. When the overnight started, I was believing God. And then the Lord told me it's her night. I got excited. And it's permanent. Bless you. Sweep away the darkness, burn away the child, and let the flame burn. There are higher heights. Be. I'll never be the same again. I'll never return. I was alone. Walk the path. I'll run the race. And I will never be the same. No. Sometimes some people think we are crazy. But 
when you see God heal somebody who has had pain for nine years, 35 years, you want to be more crazy. That kind of madness, I want God to give me more. What is the matter? Yes? Hands can go behind. It's going to be a. You're related? A demonstration. <laughs> do you know? God wants to do for her a miracle. I'm drunk. God wants to do for you a miracle. That song, His name is God. Emmanuel. The power of God is all over you. Shaka, brother. God with us. The power of God. There's a wind of the Spirit all over you. There's a wind of the Holy Spirit <laughs> doing for you miracles. He's doing a surgery in your clavicle. I don't know what happened, but he's doing a surgery. He's doing a reconstruction of that clavicle. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. There's the power of God here. The angels. When I was coming, I was calling God for angels. There are so many angels around you. My God, this is a miracle. He's healing you completely, 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 completely. There is a wind. God with us. Reveal. To his name is God. He my you well. Take your hands and touch your back right now. Take your hands and do what they were not able to do. Touch your back. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. The power of God is all over you. Do it again. You couldn't tie your zip. She couldn't tie her zip. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God. We bow before your throne. Gloria. The power of God is all over you. It's still all over you. It's done for you a miracle. Your right eye has always been blind. So what has happened?
Yes. Yes. The right eye. The miracle is her right eye was totally blind, but the Lord is opening it. God. Beautiful King. My God. My God, my God, my God. Now open your eye. Open your close this and open the right eye. what happened what has hap what had happened to the right I was born with a very bad squint in the right eye and my mom refused surgery when I was a child so you know that medically this eye was cut off I had surgery just before my wedding in 2003 in Ruharo hospital to improve it and I was operated by a German lady who told me they had moved the plane of the eye, but they, she said, it's too late, we can't do anything about the sight. And I was okay with it, at least the squint had improved. And medically I was told, that's what the brain does, it cuts it off, because I mean seeing in another plane. You understand it because you're medical. So the right eye was not seen. All through your school, you read with the left. You know, when such things happen, I remember that song. I will serve no foreign God, no any other treasure. For you are my heart's desire. The spirit without measure. To your name, I will bring a sacrifice. Do you have a relative here? You came with somebody who knows you. Somebody knows that your right eye has not been working. Come, come. Your metron. <laughs> Please tell us the testimony. I told you. That tonight was going to be what? Mercy. <laughs> Let me tell you, I sat there. I felt like the devil wanted to strangle me there. But I told the devil, you're lying. We have to heal the people today. I knew that the kind of resistance the enemy was putting. Is a liar. Tell us the testimony. This is this is out of this world. You know, as we are members of this church for many years, 
and some of you were witnesses when I escorted this lady to the altar because I was her lady of honor. You know us, Sarah and I have ministered with AYA for a long time. So we know each other. Even before we came here, we are in a mother's union cell this evening and we encouraged each other. And we said even if we are coming from a mother's union cell, which ended pretty late, we are going to make it to this altar. We want to testify and the Lord is good. I know Sarah. It is not a lie. I knew about that condition. Because all of you who are at this church know what happened to my husband. Sarah is one of the people who encouraged us. She said, Vicky, do you know that my eye has the problem? But I've survived. Sarah, you remember that? But God had a better plan for you. We give glory to God for this day. It's now at what percentage? On a scale of one to five, you close the, the left. Which one was not seeing? So close the left and open the right. And look at me. Do you see me? Do you see me? You tell me what you see. This is number what? Uh huh. There were three things. What is the third? You want to tell me three things. I have experienced the power of healing in this place. Professor Kawea's son is in bed. The arteries that are supposed to supply blood to his femur, the head of the femur, medically the doctors are saying, are either blocked or closed. He's, he's, he's uh, a sickler. He's 21, 22, so he's fault, he's fault. He doesn't have a lot of the sickler looks, but he, of course he struggled with the crises. So the femur is dying. He's being confined into a wheelchair or crutches. I was with him yesterday and the other day. And I'm believing that God can open that artery and his femurs receive blood, the heads of the femur. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we open up those blood vessels. It shall not be a vasitural necrosis of the head of the femur, the head of the femur shall be vascularized. In the name of Jesus, that femur shall not die. I open up those arteries in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. How many believe that Jesus is here? Let's stand up and worship him for a minute. Just give us a song. Just give us a song. Choir, come and lead us in a worship moment. We can't let this moment go without worshiping God. Worship him, he's here. Excellent God, we bow before oh. the glorious God, glorious, beautiful King, beautiful King. Excellent God, excellent God, we bow before the glorious God, glorious God. You are the beautiful 
Church, sing it.
Got time, you've, you've got, got time, son. Seasons in your hand. Jesus, I release the power of God. In the name of Jesus, release healing in your stomach, release healing in your abdomen. That which they said is idiopathic, we speak healing to it. In Jesus' name, amen. It is gone. Listen to this. You can have your seat. You can have your seat. The Lord is here. I'm about to finish. For 19 years, he has had what they called what? Pathies. Actually, the, the actual name is leg curve pathies disease. That's what they said. Leg curve pathes disease. It attacks the hip. It's given you pain for 19 years. 11 years. The Lord Jesus wants to heal you. The devil is a liar. Is it this side? In the name of Jesus, I release the power of God. The power is moving in your hip. Do you feel something? The power of God is reorganizing your hip. 
the power of God. Look at that. Feel that? It's the power which is turning your hip around. Look at that. It's the power of God doing surgery. This hip surgery is very expensive. This is hip replacement surgery. People go for it in South Africa. They pay millions, but the Holy Spirit is doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You are a good, good father. I really feel your bones coming back in place. This femur is coming back. The head of the femur is getting back into the socket. Every dead cell, every debris is being removed in the name of Jesus. Whatever was causing the pain. I'm not turning you. It is the power of God turning you. I love that. <sighs> Look at that. It's called hip replacement surgery. When the surgery is over, you'll have absolutely no pain. We are in the theater right now. The power of God is moving in this hip and is healing you of Pate's disease. Pain you go. Thank you, Lord. Look at that. Look at the foot. Look at that. Look at the foot. Look at that. Look at the foot. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It's called alignment. They pay a lot for it. But Jesus. But Jesus. He carried every sickness in his body on the cross. But Jesus, he took all our sins and all our diseases. He carried even Pathe's disease so that you would never carry it. The surgery is over. Check yourself. Check, 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 check. Do what that? Is the pain there? Huh? What was the hip not able to do? Could you do that? with a little movement. Is the pain there? It has to go. I have zero tolerance for pain. In the name of Jesus. You pain, you live. Okay. I apply analgesia. apply analgesia. If doctors can give pethidine and pain goes immediately, Jesus can give analgesia and pain goes immediately. Manda sele go brokama sekele Receive your healing. Check. From, from the scale of one to five, the pain is at what? Hmm? It is reducing. Which side is it now? Hmm? Diffuse from the hip to the knee. 
in the name of Jesus you now stop paining in the name of Jesus I release healing and the power of God uh -huh. is it the way it has been for 11 years tell the people praise God church uh, <coughs> when I was in senior one I just got a sudden attack of the leg and it has been there since 2008 up to now the pain has never reduced so I have stayed with the pain on 26th of May I'll be spending 11 years with that pain but I believe Christ is a healer and I believe from now the pain will go I want to pray for you. All of you have conditions that have birthdays. I cancel those birthdays in the name of Jesus. Please go and sit. Yes. Yes. No, you're going to get new kidneys. Come and we'll give her new kidneys. Yes. Touch where the kidneys are supposed to be. We'll do a kidney transplant now. In the name of Jesus, I cast polycystic kidney disease. In the name of Jesus, I release new kidneys in this body. This lady will come here testifying. She will go back and they do a scan and it will be normal. There will be absolutely perfect kidneys with absolutely no cysts. In the name of Jesus, polycystic kidney disease leave this body. We speak new kidneys. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Yes. What is it? Yes? Breast pain. Go and do an examination. My wife is going to go with you outside to do a, an examination. Then she will come and tell us. I married the right person, don't you think? Can you clap for Jesus? How old is she? How old is she? 45. 45. They said the retina. Yeah, 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 the retina of the eyes and they discover cells. Uh, now I'm going to lay hands on your eyes uh, because they have your mother's genes. In the name of Jesus, I speak brand new retina. Brand new retinas to your mother. In the name of Jesus, she will go back and they'll find the retina is absolutely new. I believe it and I decree it in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I, I need to finish, then I continue the sermon. <laughs> yes.
What is the problem? My back, I was diagnosed with scoliosis. Scoliosis. I like it because that one is nothing for Jesus. My back has crowd. Hmm? My back has crowd. Mm. And they say it is a scoliosis. I, but that it came as a result of sleeping so much. I was on wooden trotters. Spirit of scoliosis. So does it pain? Sometimes. Mm. Spirit of scoliosis. So when you stretch your hand, because the back has the curve, I think the arms are not equal. Are they equal? Stretch them. Stretch them straight. It's not so bad. Not so bad. They are equal. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of scoliosis spirit of infirmity you are bound in the name of Jesus I speak total healing to your back command your back to straighten up command your back to straighten up in the name of Jesus these muscles here I command them to get out of spasm in the name of Jesus I command your discs to be normal and to be well aligned in the name of Jesus. I speak total healing to your back in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Yes. Pasha. Yes. She's not here. Uh, I am, she's your sister. You have the same genes. When I lay hands on you, I lay hands on her. I speak healing to your sister's ears. I bind the spirit of deafness. I command it to come out of her ears. I speak, it shall not touch you also. It shall not touch you. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing and I close the gate of ear problems in your family. Name of Jesus. Who are you? So it's only pain. Now lay hands and in the name, it's the left, eh? the name of Jesus. You pain, leave. Uh, every blockage of those lactoferous ducts, I open it in the name of Jesus. I unblock. I sense it's those ducts which are blocked. 
I unblock them in the name of Jesus. There's inflammation on, along the lining of those ducts. In the name of Jesus, that inflammation I command it to cease. I speak healing. I command every pain to leave this right breast. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Check. Is it there? Yeah? It's there. The pain is there. Yeah. Pain. In the name of Jesus, live. And never return. Live. wrong with the baby? In the name of Jesus, we speak life in this heart. Speak life in this heart. Every hole in the heart, we close it. We speak life in the heart. We speak life in this body. This baby shall grow normally. This baby shall have no more milestones. This baby shall not have any complication of Down syndrome. This baby's gut shall be normal. This baby's blood shall be normal. The heart shall be normal. In the name of Jesus. This baby shall not have any respiratory problems, shall not get any complications. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. Yes. Even with double dose, the pain is still there. And still, the pain is still there. Even now. Your sign that you're going to be healed is that slight pain will leave. speak healing. She's called who? Pauline. I speak healing to Pauline, to those legs, to those ears. In the name of Jesus, I send that word to heal her now. In Jesus' name. Now, the yeah. other one has uh, sinuses and it's believed they are biological from the grandmother. I cancel that genetic path of sinuses in the name of Jesus. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Hmm? Flew, every day. Flew every day. In the name of Jesus, we open up your upper respiratory tract and we cancel that flu in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes? Uh, I normally experience heat in my chest. In the name of Jesus, I release healing in your chest in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Yes. people i need to finish yes Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has even run away. <laughs> I like children. That's why I'm a pediatrician. They don't pretend. Healed, quickly run out of church. <laughs> That's why I'm a pediatrician. They don't pretend. I was on point number what? Let me finish. Number two. Number two. Huh? Three. Oh, God. Let me give you one and I finish. Tikwe. Yeah? Are you still strong? How many are still strong? Hey. Hallelujah. Thank you for loving us, St. Francis. Thank you for believing God. God is doing wonderful things tonight. Huh? Eh? Do it for me again. She could not put the hands on. Do it again. You know, we need to see that these miracles are permanent. You couldn't put your hands behind to tie them. Eh? You put them behind and we see you got a miracle. Look at that. How long was that? For how long? You're healed. Jesus is wonderful. How many love Jesus? Do you know what he wants to do right now? He wants to save souls. Jesus wants to save souls. If you're here, he has just told me, you have never given your life to Jesus. You have been seeing these things like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And tonight you want to give your life to this Jesus whom you have seen is alive. If you're such a person, we are not going through the things of everybody bow your head, blah, blah, blah. If you want to give your life to Jesus, just put up your hand. Yes. Any other person? Yeah. He told me that he wants to save people. If you want to give your life to Jesus, just put up your hand. Any other person? You want to give your life to Jesus. Who else? You want to give your life to Jesus. Put up your hand straight. Any other person who wants to give their life to Jesus? You are here, but you're not born again. You're attending this overnight, but you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Salvation is the greatest miracle. If you want to receive that greatest miracle of salvation, you want your name to be written in the book of life. Put up your hand and we pray together. You're not sure that if you die today, 
you'd find your name written in the book of life. But today you want to be sure. Just put up your hand. Stand up. Stand up. Any other person? Just come, 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 come down. Where? Just come down, come. Any other person? Just come there. We shall pray together and continue the service. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, just stand facing me. Stand facing me. Any other person you want to give your life to Jesus? Oh, to thee, said Savior, I sorry. Any other person you want to give your life to Jesus? Sorry. Oh, who else wants to give their life to Jesus? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, to be my blessed Savior. I'm still waiting. You are there. You've never given your life to Jesus. But tonight, you want to make it your night. Come. Oh, to thee, my blessed Savior. Thank you. I'm still waiting. I surrender. Oh. Any other person? Any other person? You want to give your life to Jesus? Who else? This is the greatest miracle. You can be healed. I told you, you can be healed. And you'll be the healthiest person in hell. You don't want to be the healthiest person in hell. You want to be the healthiest person in heaven. So if you're still there, you want to give your life to Jesus. We'll give you one more chance. I surrender. to do is to lead you in a, in a prayer. Hmm? I want to lead you in a prayer. The Bible says that uh, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So we lead you in that prayer to make sure that happens because the Bible says that is how it should happen. So, repeat this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I confess that you are Lord. I believe that you died and you rose again. Today, I give you my heart. Be my Lord be my savior. Tonight, I am born again. I'm a child of God. I receive forgiveness for my sins. Today, I'm a brand new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. 
Rejoice the way heaven is rejoicing. Yes. There is usually somebody who writes their name, but I usually see them standing here when we are praying for the people. But I'm not seeing them standing here. So I want you to stand and face the church for accountability so that they know who you are. Come on, receive them in the name of Jesus. Receive them. I don't want to miss them. I need them to be written down. Keep clapping for them as they record us. Hey, you come, you come, Reverend will write you. You get the chance of stepping on this. Clap for them as they step on the... How many are enjoying this night? Yeah. Let me tell you, I want, one of my goals is to Keep heaven in celebration mode. The Bible says there is rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents. So my goal is when they have celebrated over one sinner, I send another one. When they are about to stop the party, I send another one. I want to arrive in heaven and angels start telling me that you made us work over time. We are always celebrating, rejoicing. When we are about to rejoice, to rest, you send another one. Are... That is my goal. Eshayona, the country government of Mutiga. Nathan Kakuburira, Omigurbajem Mutan, Kakubizaka Togo, because somebody can get saved. To translate it in English, when I start preaching, they pass around the announcement that put the katogo on fire because anybody can get saved. Yes. This is a good night. I told you tonight was going to be massive. Massive. Massive, 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 massive. Massive. So I was on point number what? <laughs> no, I was on number four. We, we, we were overwhelmed by the examples. The EGs were so many. Jesus is wonderful. You people, I love God. What the, there's a point. I talked about the power of God. Eh? What, what, you, what you saw, what was happening, everybody who was being healed, they were healed by the power of God. You see? Every time we step out in the name of Jesus, by believing in that name, when we lay hands, what we transmit is the power. Uh, let me demonstrate it. You see there, where is the switch? I need a switch. Uh, at the door, uh, the fan. How do they operate it? I was trying to avoid it. That's how they switch it on. So how do they switch it on? So, what happens in the switch, the little electricity that I know, in the switch, there are two points like this, okay? There's a point coming from the power source, and there's a point coming to where you want the power to work. 
So inside here, there is a point. When I pull this, I cause what is coming from the power source to touch what is coming to the fan. Okay? So when you switch on, or when you do like this, you complete the circuit. Okay? You complete the circuit. So this is how it happens. When I am, the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Okay? That's what Acts 1 8 says. Now, when we receive power, when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we start to speak in other tongues. Okay? When you speak in other tongues, the way I talk about, I look at tongues, tongues is like a yakamita. When you have yaka in the house, even if every light is off and all the gadgets are off, but as long as the digits are on, it's an indication that there is power. So when I'm speaking in tongues, I'm being reminded that you carry something. So I carry the power of God. The power source is on my inside. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27. He is the power source. Okay? When you are sick, you are the bulb which needs power. In that bulb there is a filament. When I switch on, I send power that burns the filament. And then the filament will light and you'll see light. Okay? Now, that filament is somebody who is sick. So when I come and I lay my hand, I am completing the circuit. I carry the power of God, but if I don't lay hands, the circuit will not be complete. God's medicine bottle operates in such a way that you have to open it by laying hands on people, by commanding them to do what they were not able to do. That is what Peter and John did. They said, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. So you must command somebody to do what they are not able to do. Why? Because you are releasing power that is not yours. If I tell you to do what you can do, then I'm doing what a doctor can do. But if I tell you to do what you're not able to do, then I'm saying it by the power of God. <coughs> ah. Have you got it? So the power of God is a special ingredient of God's medicine bottle. The power of God. Every believer, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said, ah, this is beautiful. God wants to do something. There's an EG coming. There's an EG coming. He says, tarry in Jerusalem. He says, tarry until you are endued with power from on high. Why? Because, you see, Jesus had been healing people by the power of God. Okay? The works that he did, he did them because of the baptism that came upon him in Matthew chapter 3 verse 16. When he was baptized, the Bible says the heavens opened. And the Holy Spirit came upon him in form of what? A dove. Matthew 3.16. Then he tells them in Acts 1.8 that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has what? Come upon you. Which means when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you receive power. So when I, when, that's, why you're, that's why I was training Rosalind and, 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 and her. And I was telling them, you say, I discharge the power of God. Let me tell you what I learned. If an orthopedic surgeon can do it, then the power of God can do it. 
So, when I'm asking, what did the doctors say? I'm trying to find out what I want the Holy Spirit to do. They say, the doctor said that uh, my bones have a problem. I can't do anything. I say, okay. What is impossible with men is possible with God. And I carry God. The Bible says, in him I live and move and have my being. I'm a carrier of God. Every believer, how many people are believers here? You are carriers of God. You carry dangerous cargo. I tell people, I am flammable. You come near me, you'll catch it. It's contagious. I preached a sermon someday. I said, I am Christ positive. The Bible says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. The Bible says, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Christ lives in me. Because Christ lives in me, I am Christ positive. When somebody's status changes, when they tell you you're positive of a disease, there is a way you live, there is what you eat, There is even something that we call positive living. And if you live positively, you live long. Now me, I am Christ positive. I am charged. I am like those things they used to jump start a car. When the battery has gone down, they bring those wires, they put them on the battery and then they say, aha, switch on. Mm, say, okay, now you can go. They have discharged power into the battery. When I lay hands on you, I'm discharging power into your system. That's why I told you, I am surprised when you don't recover. Because when I lay my hands on you, I expect you to recover. That's why I lay hands on you and walk away. And expect you to recover. If you don't recover, the problem is not the transmitter, it's the receiver. <laughs> Let me tell you the truth. When you have a TV, okay, and you're not getting NTV news, it does not mean that they are not reading news in the studios at Serena. <laughs> it could be that you have not paid the subscription. <laughs> the receiver most of the time is the problem you're laying hands but the receiver is saying shall it work, shall it work shall it work, shall it work shall it work, shall it work and James chapter 1 says the person who has a double mind must not expect to receive anything from God so when the receiver is doubting I will lay my hands but the power will not operate in the receiver but when the receiver is believing that today is my night, when I lay, the power works. Are we together so far? So the power of God is a special ingredient, is a special ingredient of this medicine bottle. That is why believers, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's why he says, these signs shall follow those that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall speak in other tongues. That is talking about receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, ministry is much better. Do you see how I'm enjoying it? I'm preaching in a very organized way without reading. It's not because I went to a special college. It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Everything is following each other. Because I have a voice telling me, say this, say this, say this. Isaiah 35, 21 says, you shall hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. It's like I'm on autopilot. Now, there are people here, and you have always desired to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
God wants to do an EG. Are you there? You have always desired. You say, these people who speak in tongues, how do they do it? Eh? And you are, let me tell you why many people don't speak in tongues. Because they have made it so complicated. People have made it as if speaking in tongues. Eh? You're praying, and then you're praying, you're praying, you're praying, and then you reach a certain point where you cannot control yourself, and then you burst out in tongues. And then as quickly as you've started, you stop. Speaking in tongues is a prayer language. It's for every believer. I choose to pray in Ruchiga. I choose to pray in English. I choose to pray in tongues. It's as simple as that. Other people come to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they are there like, like open your mouth and speak they are waiting for a certain force to come let me tell you let me give you a simple understanding when a baby is born they are born with the language center there is a part of their brain that has language but for them to speak that language they must open their mouth You must open. The Bible says they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. You open your mouth and start to speak by faith and the Holy Spirit gives you what to say. How many people want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit tonight? Come. It's going to be simple. Come and I show you. You know me... I'm not complicated. And some people have issues with it. I don't have a lot of drama. If I was shaking, many people would come running. Now it is time. Ooh. Let me tell you. I want to start by telling you what speaking in tongues is not for. Speaking in tongues is not for sure. Okay? God does not give you tongues so that you show people that you can speak in tongues. When you speak in tongues, it's a sign that you have been empowered for service. But being baptized in the Holy Spirit is equipping. If you, if, you, if you don't want to serve God, if you don't have a desire to serve God, to, to live for Him, then there is really no reason to be empowered. Speaking in tongues and being baptized is not for going to sleep or eating. It's for serving. You shall receive power and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost ends of the earth. This is lovely. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. John chapter 7, verse 38, 37. Jesus came. The Bible says it was the last day of the feast. Jesus came to them and says, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And then he says, Those who believe in me, out of them shall flow rivers of living water. And the Bible says, he was speaking of the Holy Spirit, whom those who believed were later to receive. The qualification for receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, being a believer. Number one, be a believer. Number two, be thirsty. Just desire. Be thirsty. Number three, ask. Mark chapter, Matthew chapter 11, verse 13. Jesus spoke and said, If you, fathers, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father not give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a request away. Just a request. You ask, you receive. 
Ask and you receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be open. So I am going to pray. A very simple prayer I tell you. Very simple. When I pray, you will ask the Lord to baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Now the beauty is this. When you got born again, the Bible says you were sealed with the Holy Spirit as a mark of ownership. So you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. But when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has you. That's the difference. When you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, he takes over. Takes over your life. That's what's going to happen. Are you ready? It's a very special ingredient. Changes my life. Changed my life and ministry. And then, and then after asking, the Bible says in Mark chapter 11 verse 23, that whatsoever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and you shall have it. After asking, believe that you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is why many people get it wrong. They look for a feeling. They look for a fire, a what. There may be a feeling, there may be nothing. The important thing is to believe. Believe that you have received. And after you believe that you have received, the most beautiful, amazing experience will happen to your life. You'll feel a bubbling coming out from your inside. Just open your mouth and start to speak. You'll say things that you don't understand. It's okay. You don't have to understand them. You'll speak things that don't make sense to your head. It's okay. They don't make sense to you. They make sense to God. Just go ahead. Are you now ready? I believe that the Lord wants to baptize many with the Holy Spirit tonight. Just lift up your hands. Those in front, lift up your hands. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I love you. You have captured my heart. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I love you. I've come. You have Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Now I want you to ask him right now. John said, when Jesus comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Jesus is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and fire. So ask him, calmly ask him, say, Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Say, I receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these people standing here like it was on the day of Pentecost like it was in Acts chapter 4 like it was in Acts chapter 8 like it was in Acts chapter 19 when the Holy Spirit came upon them let the Spirit of God fill them Lord let them be filled all of them Receive. Now open your mouth and begin to speak. Some of you, 
you already have the tongues coming out. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Wow. After saying baptize me in the Holy Spirit, believe it. Don't keep saying baptize me, baptize me, baptize me. Believe that he has done it. And start to thank him for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And begin to speak in other tongues. As the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. Look at that. Look at that. Sheleboka. You have got it, sister. You have got it. You have got it. Continue speaking in other tongues. You have got it. You have got it. It's happening all over this place. Receive. It's happening. It, it, it is happening. It's nice. It's happening. It happens effortlessly. 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 Look at that. The baptism is happening. The baptism is happening. It's happening. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon. I need ushers somewhere nearby. I need ushers. I need ushers because the power of God is coming upon the people. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We see in the Bible, they receive the baptism as they laid hands on them. That's why I lay hands on you. When I lay hands on you, believe that you have received. Begin to speak in other tongues. That is it. Open your mouth. It happens. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening, sister. This power, it gives life to your bodies. This is the power that heals the sick. Yes, continue doing it. Halabosa. They laid hands on them and they spoke in other tongues. In Cornelius' house, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in other tongues. Just open your mouth by faith and the Holy Spirit will give you utterance. Don't worry if you don't understand what you're saying. If you don't understand it, just open your mouth and speak in other tongues. Ashers, where are they? Ashers, where are they? This is another part of the service. The fire is here. The fire is here. The fire is here. Like they waited in Pentecost. Like they waited in the upper room. Wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. He's coming upon you in power. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. Ashers, where are they? Ashers, where are they? Receive. Yes, you're being baptized in the Holy Spirit. You're being baptized in the Holy Ghost. You're being baptized in the Holy Ghost. That is how it happens. Effortlessly. Effortlessly. The Holy Spirit is gentle. He's gentle. He gives you utterance. Suddenly your tongue begins to speak. Suddenly your tongue is loosed. My God, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening all over the place. All over the place. All over the place. The power is here. Yes, that is it, sister. That's it, sister. That is it, sister. That is what they call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is what they call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have received a brand new prayer language. When you don't know how to pray, when you don't know how to pray, pray in that language. That language overcomes barriers. That language overcomes infirmities in prayer. You don't know how to pray. You don't know what to pray for. Pray in that language. Pray in that language. <coughs> he's flowing. He's flowing. He's flowing. He's flowing. He's flowing. Yes. Brother, you've got it. Brother, you've got it. You've got it, brother.
You've got it, brother. That is it, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have got it, brother. You've got it. Continue, continue. 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 Be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Begin to speak. Yes, that is it, brother. That is it, brother. That is it. That is it, brother. That is it. 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 That's how it happens. That is how it happens. The fire of God comes upon you. The joy, a certain joy comes upon your life. You can't describe it. Suddenly you love people. Suddenly you feel you love everybody. That's the Holy Spirit. Look at all of you. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. My God, this is lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want, there are people who are saying, fill me up, fill me up. Now believe he has filled you up and start speaking in other tongues. This is a faith thing. We receive the baptism by faith. He has done it for you, sister. Just receive. My God. My God, my God. He also comes with joy. He gives you joy unspeakable. This joy you can't get from anything. My God. Something amazing is happening here. Oh, my God. This is lovely. Let me tell you, I don't need to touch your head. On, in Cornelius' house, they were there, and the power came upon all of them. But ministers shall lay hands on you. Receive the baptism, sister. Receive the fire. He baptizes in the Holy Spirit and in fire. I love this. Sister, you have got it. You've got it. You've got it, my friend. You've got it, my friend. My God. Hallelujah. Now you can go and sit and I got the next point. That was E.G. of that point. My God. How many have spoken in tongues for the first time? Put up your hand. You've spoken in tongues for the first time. Put up your hand straight. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yes. Can go and sit. How many are enjoying this service? Every point has an EG. For some of you, what will happen to you is what happened to Joyce Mayer. They prayed for Joyce Mayer and nothing happened. Nothing. As she was driving back home, something came upon her. She just had to park by the roadside and started speaking in other tongue on the roadside. Some of you will go back to your hostels and you'll be a mess. Because I believe all of you have received. Clap your hands to Jesus. <laughs> that was point number what? I'm going to give you the last one. And we finish. 
tonight is massive. Did we pray for motion sickness? Eh, hey, yes. They've reminded me. There's a prayer I want us to pray. All of us. It is called a sabotage prayer. Let me describe what it is. Sabotage prayer is when you sabotage whatever is growing inside you that hasn't been discovered yet. Because you see, when you go to Cancer Institute and they do tests and they tell you your stage 2, stage 3, means it has been growing inside you but it hadn't been discovered. But we can sabotage it. We want to sabotage whatever. Maybe, you know, you hear that somebody, they were treating ulcers, they were treating ulcers, they were treating ulcers, and then they discovered it was cancer of the stomach. How the change happens from ulcers to cancer of the stomach, you can never know. We want to sabotage all those things. How many want to sabotage things? Yes. We want to sabotage things. Let me tell you, good health is your right. Jesus paid the price for it. You are not the sick trying to be healed. You're the healed that the devil is trying to steal health from. Because by his stripes you were healed. You are the healed that the devil is trying to steal health from. That's a powerful point. Among the most powerful I've made tonight. How many want to sabotage? Put your hand on your head. Say, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, sabotage I sabotage everything, everything that could be growing inside me that has not yet been discovered. Whatever was planted in me that the Lord Jesus did not plant, I uproot it in the name of Jesus, I uproot every sickness. I uproot every disease. In the name of Jesus, I declare total healing upon my body, upon my health, upon my brothers, upon my sisters, upon my parents. Whatever it is that the enemy planted in our family that Jesus did not plant, I uproot it in the name of Jesus. I destroy every curse. I cast every curse in the name of Jesus. I declare I have been redeemed from the curse. I am not cast. I am uncastable. You cannot cast me. You cannot cast my family because my family is blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. We call that a sabotage prayer. You sabotage it. And I do this quite a lot. You wake up in the morning and something tells you by the end of the day you'll have flu. You sabotage it. You feel something like, I think I, it's like I'm having malaria. You sabotage it. You short circuit the process. There is somebody who has a pain in the ankles. I don't know whether it's arthritis or what, but Jesus wants to heal that person. Who is that person? Pain in the ankles. Everywhere. I said pain in the ankles. Not everywhere. I was talking about the power of God. It's you? Who is it? Is it you? Come. Come. The power of God I think it is you. It is you. Whoever it is, Jesus will heal them. So, huh? The leg and ankle. For how long? Since December. What happened? Just came. In the name of Jesus. Where is the problem? Hmm? Hmm. 
what happened? Who, who spoke in tongues for the first time tonight? Who spoke in tongues for the first time? For the first time. You spoke in tongues for the first time. Yes, sir. You come. The two of even your sister come. I want to show you. I was telling you that when you speak in tongues, you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You have received the power of God. I want to show you that you now have this power. You spoke in tongues for the first time. Congratulations. You are now filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, Peter and John said, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have we give unto you. Whenever you are you're filled, you are filled to give away. To give away. As you are praying for the sick, you are giving away what you have. So you are going to lay hands on her. Show her where the problem is. And the way you pray, you don't say, I beg, I pray, Lord, if you wish, you can heal, whatever. No. You say, I release the power of God in this leg, in the name of Jesus, and I command pain to live. Do it like that and we see. Tonight we are in healing school. This is lovely. Afterwards, you say, I thank you that it is done. Amen. Now you tell her to do what she was not able to do. You tell her you are healed. You know why we do that? Because God calls things that are not as though they are. You call it, and then you create, hey, hey, ciao. She's okay. Is it gone? Yeah? Almost gone. Ah, ah. We don't almost do it. You, you take it out completely. You do it again if it's not yet done. This is how you should live. It should be your lifestyle. In the restaurants, in what? Let me tell you, when you pray for a Muslim and the back pain goes, the door opens to preach to him the gospel. You tell him, you see, this Jesus who has healed you, he's alive. Do you want him? Uh huh. Check. I will also add if it has, it's still there. The way you're checking, I think it's not there. Is it there? It's not there. It's gone. She's healed. Congratulations. You healed your first person. Look at the smile on her face. Uh huh. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, now there are ladies, uh, but, uh, uh, now you come what, when you're a gentleman and you're ministering to ladies uh, you get a lady to lay hands and then you lay hands on the lady yeah the, it is called ministerial ethics okay the problem is where the legs okay you go. from the knee to the whatever yeah uh huh uh -huh, you lay hands on, on, on my wife. Gently. <laughs> uh -huh. You say, in the name of Jesus, I release the power of God in this leg. In the name of Jesus, I command it to be healed. By his stripes, she was healed. So I release healing in this leg, in Jesus' name. Amen. And I command pain to live. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh -huh. Now you, you ask her whether the pain is still there. Whatever James. Hmm? Is it there? Yeah? You can now bend the, you can you are not able to bend the knee. It was paining. It was paining. Now it's not paining. You're healed. She's healed. <laughs> Congratulations. You just healed the knee. You just performed the knee surgery. Uh-huh. Arthritis. Arthritis.
the pain. It's pain. It's pain. Any rejects. Mm. Stretch your hand towards her, please. Let's pray. We are in this together. Pray for her. And command arthritis to leave. Every time, let me tell you how to heal insure. Every time somebody has an insurable illness, it's a spirit. It's caused by a spirit. So as you're praying, you're commanding the spirit to leave. Arthritis is caused by spirit. So you command the spirit of arthritis to leave. In the name of Jesus, you spirit leave. Spirit of arthritis leave. The whole church is in agreement. And commanding every spirit of arthritis to live. To live in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I command these joints to be healed. Arthritis, get out of these joints. I release the power of God in your joints. From head to toe. I bind the spirit of arthritis, command it to live. In the name of Jesus. What were the hands not able to do? Is the pain in the hand still there? Which how that one? This one when I start the first time. Uh-huh. So let me show you another thing. Jesus found a man in the church. The Bible says he had a hand which was shriveled. You ever read that scripture? And Jesus told him, stretch out your hand. And as he obeyed that instruction and stretched out his hand, he was healed. So stretch out your arms. Stretch out your arms. Stretch out your arms. Stretch out your arms. Be healed. Be healed from every man of arthritis. Be healed. Release the power in every joint. I say be healed from every manner of arthritis. Now put them down and lift them again. Would they reach there? They couldn't reach there. Now put them down. Put them up again. Now put them down. So tell me at what point they pain. Is that pain? It has gone. It has gone. Jesus. You said total body. So where else in the body? Joints. So these ones are still pain. Yeah. Here. Be healed. Be healed. You know you're being healed. You're being stretched. The power of God is stretching the joint. The power of God. In medicine they call it traction. Your joints are being put under traction and being healed. Look at that. 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 They do that in a department. It's a full department. It's called physiotherapy. It's a full department. 
But God made believers hospitals that are fully contained with all departments. Okay? You're healed. Amen. You're healed. Were you able to clap your hands? What happens when you clap your hands? Would you feel pain when you clap your hands? Now you don't feel any pain. Clap harder. Clap for Jesus. Sit. Yes. Uh, uh, I need to finish. Yes. Can I have a prayer request? Yeah. In the name of Jesus, we pray for divine intervention in that situation. Let God miraculously intervene in that situation. In Jesus' name, amen. Finally, tell your neighbor, finally. He's finishing. Some of you sleep has sleep has so overwhelmed you. Hmm? Have you ever been in class and you're dozing and you're trying to make sure the teacher doesn't see that you're dozing? <laughs> and then when you close your eyes and open them, you find the teacher looking at you. <laughs> Some of you, that's what is happening. Finally, an ingredient. I talked about the name of Jesus. I talked about faith in the name of Jesus. I talked about the power of God. I talked about, that was the fourth. Okay. The fourth is authority. 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 Write it down, authority. I'm going to talk about authority and I finish. Authority, all the things that I've talked about, they operate through authority. You see, in the office of the president, there is power. In the office of the vice chancellor, there is power. Even in the office that I'm in right now, there is power of a preacher. Hmm? Okay? But I cannot release that power if I'm not authorized through an invitation. <laughs> eh? when somebody is appointed a cabinet when the, to be a cabinet minister is very powerful when somebody is a cabinet minister they release so much power because of the authority of the appointment the moment that authority is withdrawn they can no longer exercise that power Are we together? A lecturer can come and say, I need coursework. I need coursework by the end of today. And he's telling you at 5 p.m. You have to produce them somehow. But when the authority is withdrawn and they are suspended, you can meet them and say, do you still need the coursework? <laughs> because the authority was withdrawn. In the traffic, a traffic guy has a lot of power that is vested in him with the authority they have given him by deployment. You get? There is power, but what causes it to operate is deployment. When he is deployed, when is it? there's that other bad place as well, Mpiji, around there, hmm? When he's deployed there, what shows that those guys have authority? When you are driving from far, when you see white, the foot goes from the accelerator to the brake because you are anticipating that he might just do this. Those guys never carry guns. Have you ever seen a traffic guy with gun? They never carry any guns. They just do this. And because they have authority, you do what? 
sit up. But when they are undeployed, they no longer have the authority. You can meet them walking, just wave. They also wave. Are we together? Now, Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, I have given you power and authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by no means harm you. God has given you and me authority but he will not use it for you. When you see us laying hands and commanding things, we are releasing authority. Are we together? What gives me confidence is the authority that God has given me. When you know the authority that you have, you don't shout. If you see somebody shouting, they don't know their authority. Hey! I usually see people do uh, deliverance. You see them go in the person's ear. If you think that demons will come out through going in the person's ear, you don't know that you have authority. Have you ever seen the vice chancellor moving around the university shouting out orders? Go there! Go there! You! Go there! You! Go there! If you ever see him shouting, it's because the authority is being threatened or has been withdrawn. If you ever see a pastor stand in the church and start banging the pulpit, you people, don't you know that I'm the pastor of this church? You know they no longer have the authority. When you have authority, you just say, come, and somebody comes. Say, go, somebody goes. Do you understand? That's the confidence. I know that I've been given authority against snakes and scorpions and against all the power of the enemy. And every believer has been given it. The difference between any two believers is the revelation they have. Some have a revelation that they have authority, others don't. Are we together? This, this is a, tell your neighbor, don't sleep on this point, it's important. Tell your neighbor, don't sleep, it's important. Wake them up, wake the other person, tell them, don't sleep, it's about finish. Tell them, don't sleep, it's about finish. Hey, can you imagine? I'm about to reach 6 p.m., 6 a.m. This can only be the grace of God. And I was sick, very sick when I was starting. Authority. The centurion. Have you ever heard of the centurion? It is Matthew chapter 8. There was a centurion. He came to Jesus and said, help me. I have a servant who is at home dying. Come and help me. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The story is in Matthew chapter 8. The centurion said, you don't need to come home. Just speak a word. Eh? He said, what? He said, yeah. Then he said, I am a man under authority. I have soldiers under me. I said to this one, go, and he goes. Come, and he comes. He understood that he had authority over a hundred soldiers. And he was also under authority. Me, I, when you have a child, or when you have a helper at home, you understand these things. Just say, bring me that cup. You know, fathers have a way of using their authority too much. He can be seated there, and the remote control is here. He calls the son and says, come and give me this remote. Then tells the wife, bring me that cup. And the cup is there. But they will bring the cup. Because he has what? Don't misuse the authority. Okay? The centurion understood. And he said, just speak a word. He understood that authority is released through words. 
through instructions. That's why we say, be healed. That's why I say, we command pain to go. We are releasing authority. Praise the Lord. When you understand authority, it helps you to believe. He knew that Jesus had authority over sickness. He said, just speak the word. When, that's why when people understand authority, they come forward and say, pray for my mother in the village. Because they know that when somebody has authority, they can send a word. Last time we were here, some sisters came here believing for their mother. It was around 2 a.m. They believed and their mother was healed. They came and testified after a phone call. Are we together? God has, tell your neighbor, God has given us authority. Tell your neighbor, it is our responsibility to use it. Lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all these people. I thank you for tonight. I thank you for everything that you have done. Lord, there are those that were not able to come forward here, but they are sick in one way or another. I can't put hands on every one of them but Lord, I release the healing virtue of God upon everybody who is sick and their relatives in the name of Jesus. Let them be baptized in the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let the power of God and the blessing of God, let it overtake them. In Jesus' name we pray. Ladies and gentlemen, that ends the reading on God's medicine bottle.